So. Hello everyone, my name is Piotr Biskupski. I work in IBM for three years. Previously, I work uh, at Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznań. I was related with uh, nanotechnology and physics. So I will always also told you some things about new uh, flash storage, because as you can see, uh, my name is Piotr Biskupski and my role, job role is storage solution technical leader for IBM flash system. But, but today, I want to show you, I want to tell you about the idea about software defined storage. What is the behind those letters? What is behind the idea of having something hardware st uh, stored in front of the customer, but closed in the, some storage uh, software? First of all, as you know, everyone is using devices, mobile, mobile devices, so our world is covered by data. And previously, we were thinking that the data is somehow not collectible. We cannot make some uh, fingerprints of the, those data. We cannot collect them and maybe prepare them to make some possibility to store them in a very efficient way. That's why we want to introduce something like software-defined storage and bring to the customer. Because, as you know, a lot of customers is waiting for technology, is aware of technology, are playing with the technology. Everyone wants to have their own iPads, whatever, devices and play with the data, play with the technology. What we can do with that? We can grab those data and somehow we can collect the data and learn how to store the data across our storage devices. So we don't have only dummy hard drives. Right now we have the possibility to create infrastructure behind those software. When we start thinking about IT infrastructure, as you can see, 20 years ago, only 29% of the all spans was related with the IT administration. In these days, you can see over there, it's more than 68%. So storing the data and having the IT administration made much, much, not so complicated like now, it's a very important task for us. And that's why we want to show how it can be done, not only just selling some marketing ideas, we want to show you that using the smarter computing, they're using the uh, devices which are designed for storing the data, which we can also use in the environments, just like your IT environment for different technologies from the different vendors. I'm not talking only about one vendor. Of course, I'm from IBM, but you know, it, behind the software, we can hide whatever we want. We can hide different vendors, we can have different technologies, and we can use them in a very efficient way. And that's why we want to have our platform, just like you, say, you can see over there, open and collaborative. So, what is the software-defined storage idea? I took two. From, one is from Wikipedia, as you can see. This is marketing team promoted storage technologies. And second is snake oil. Does anyone of you knows what the snake oil is? No one? Do you know when someone is going to sell you uh, amazing medicine, amazing let's say, uh, curing uh, for your, your, your face or your something like that for big amount of money and, just, and selling you just pure water. This is the snake oil. But let's see how we can change that, how we can change the software, how we can see how we can also change the whole IT infrastructure. First of all, we should start to thinking about how we can apply, how, what we can put there, how we can make the 
different solutions like VMware, like Active Cloud Foundation, like OpenStack, to be compatible with your storage device, with your storage system. So what do we need? We need some kind of platform. And we need something which can store the data in those places when you want to store it. This is the first, situ first thing. Second thing is I want to have platform which can be connected to different vendors, to different storage solutions, but I want to have only one single place of administration. One single place, one easy administration set to be able to deploy storage, to deploy virtual machines as fast as, as it possible. And also, I don't want to play how many drives do I need for this one? How, what type of technology do I need? No, I want to have different tiers behind my storage, divided, three, four tiers. And then my storage, my system, should be aware about the data and store them very efficient way in different places. So this is the idea about software-defined storage, but not related with one single vendor. It must be open solution. So when, we, when I joined IBM, when I started to work with IBM, uh, we promoted Storewise platform, Storewise as a platform. You can see over there, over here. So today we got the open, ex uh, extensible, and industry lead platform as a Storewise. And next step is creating the analytic and application driven platform, but it can be based on Storewise platform, on Storewise hardware. Why? First of all, when we introduced in 2010, 2010, yes, 2010, the store-wise. We tried to simplify everything which is related with the administration of the storage. We tried to simplify administration. We tried to simplify data storage. We tried to al also simplify connection between different sites, different vendors, different boxes. And as you can see, we have very successful platform very full-grown platform. As you can see, across the world, we sold almost 36,000 of bo those boxes. We're storing 1.1 exabytes in capacity. And of course, we are able to deliver 9.99% of availability. And in this package, you can have some kind of different hardware. This is the sun volume controller. Those are the entry-level boxes, mid-range boxes, and also high-end boxes, which can deliver you those nine fives of availability. So what do we have here? Let's see about the boxes. But what is most important part over here? It's that the store-wise family based on the one single code, which means customers, which both the low-end machines like this one, and high-end, like some volume controller, has the same software installed on those boxes, which can work just like on high-ends, on the low-ends. So now we are able to show, we are able to prove that the software family, the store-wise software family, can work with different boxes. What does it mean for the future? <laughs> Maybe that we can sell you the software for running your hardware from different vendors. You can buy whatever you want from different companies. You can build your own storage. You can build your own machines. You can build your own application-driven software-defined storage. So let's jump to the history a little bit. 2010, just like I mentioned, we got the Storewise started family, and now we are ar around over here. So October 2013, the IP replication, and the new box, Storewise V5000, but as you can see, this arrow never ends. This platform will be still developed. Why? 
because it proved that it's possible to run this on different hardwares, on different boxes, and also you are able to deploy very easily some volumes for the VMwares, for the Oracle, for different type of applications, very easy, and you can control your data. Not only that you have that amount of drives and my performance is on this level. No, you can choose tiers, you can drop data. Even the software, even these boxes are thinking where to store the data, how to store it. If you need fast access to the data, the system will just transfer the data through the faster tier, to the SSD drive, to the flash drive. If data is not, is, doesn't touch for, single, for the months, for the weeks, it can be transferred to the tapes. Because as you know, the tape is the cheapest one, cheapest possibility to store the data, a large amount of them. So why it's possible? Because software based, built, uh, software created for the store-wise is built in so-called three parts. First one is an open access, so you get different possibility to access to the system. But not, this is not the all of possibilities. You can also have the API for the this, for this software to be create your own application. Next part is the related with the core, core platform. So this is the interface layer, the communication layer, and of course, clustering possibility. Because in this world, there is no possibility to avoid clustering because we, don't, we have to have possibility to build storage, build systems which can work and you can have the high availability across the, your IT infrastructure. And of course on the core platform you have everything which is related with the storage. So this is the remote copy, caching, flash copy, mirroring, space efficient copies and so on so on. And of course next is extensible components. Now we have access to two of those. First one is compression. Next one is easy tiering. I will describe it a little bit later. What is it? But as you can see from this picture, we can attach whatever we want up here. We can create even the duplication. We can attach even three different tiers for storing the data and so on and so on. This software stack for the Storewise family it's easy to extend because we got two different parts. First one is an access. Second one is possibility to, to add additional components. And when we start to thinking about that, we can build something like application center for Storewise. This is future. I'm talking about future right now, but it's the closest future as it possible. So first of all is application center. We can, you can create, you can share application created for your storage devices. Not only IBM storage devices, also for others. Because the storage devices, for those, those boxes can also work as a virtualization layer. So you can connect different vendors and you can manage the capacity, you can manage all those boxes from a single point of administration. Next one is creating the open API for this uh, application, for the management, for the snapshotting, for the flash copying, for disaster recovery, and so on, so on. And of course, quite important is to know what is behind the data. What is the fingerprint of the data? How the data change during the week, during the day? And then apply those changes and you're storing the data across your storage device. It also can be possible. Why we want to have that kind of platform? First of all, we want to offer for different storage vendors, software vendors, sorry, uh, possibility to cooperate with our boxes, with our devices. Not only just deploy the volume, deploy the LAN connected to the system, no. We want to have possibility to attach those systems to different VMs, to different operating systems, to different database systems, and also to build a infrastructure that your application, your operating system, will know what is behind the 
hardware, what is behind your storage, how is connected to your database, what kind of database is there, do you have any snapshots of those databases on, on this hardware level. All those informations are very important for software uh, integration, integration. Next part is creating the box which can easily be very efficient without any changes inside the system. First of all, thin provisioning, everyone has it. Next part is real-time compression. For example, compressing the data on flight, but without any performance impact on your storage, on your system, on your application. And now, and another thing is making the calculations from your data to be sure which one, they, which of your data is hot, which is cold, which is, which should be run on the fast tier, which should be dropped on the slowest tier. And your system, just like the software system like Storewise, it's aware of that and can do that for you. Next part is possibility to have different configurations for high availability, also for having the copies. And also, like you, like you see over there, over here, on, this, on the middle of the page, have the application-aware copies. So your application will know that the data has his own copy on your storage. And you are doing nothing from application level. You're just pressing one single button, and you have the flash copy, just like that, in a couple of seconds. And of course, possibility to create infrastructure which is uh, working in high availability, to have two different uh, sites. And with, when something happened with one single site, all data will be transferred, not the, okay, not the transferred, all data will be running on the mirrored copy on the second side, for example, without any interruption, without any also using of the human to just switch to those second side. Everything must be done automatically. So this software also helps you to create that kind of system. Next part is, of course, open platform, which can cooperate with different vendors. For example, you, get, you have on your IT infrastructure different vendors, different storages from totally different companies. And you want to have only one single place where you want to administer it. This software, this Storewise software, gives you this possibility. You can attach whatever you want from different vendors, different, even different types of storages. And you can have all the functionalities, all the functionalities which I previously mentioned on, this, on the same system. Even something, something will change with your old storage devices because it can work much, much faster because it will be, the data will be stored in, let's say, store, store-wise way. It will be divided and all, for example, storage pool will work, will work for you just like, just like one. Next part is creating the administration and your user interface so easy and so fast to change the time spent for every single administrator on your data. This is it. The Storewise software gives you possibility and to change the speed of the interface on 47%. This is, of course, to other software interfaces. It's proven, as you can see over there, you have the possibility to deploy different LANs, different volumes, with the different technology from one single place. You can even switch from this one to the compressed one just with a single mouse click. It's in this time when you, everyone is using the iPads and using the MacBooks, this, this is the solution. We, we want to, we can, we can, for example, we can create storage administrator in 10 minutes who can be able to deploy the LAN, deploy the, make the flash copy, create the connection between your LAN and your system. Easy, like a, as a chai play. Next part is having the possibility to change the tiers automatically to have the 
architecture created to have the possibility to easily, without any interruption, change in, in, and improve your performance up to three times. For example, just attaching only 5% of the capacity based on the flash storage. It can be SSD, it can be flash, doesn't matter. But only 5% five of those, oh, five percent, five percent can change three times of the performance. Next part is possibility to compression. How much we can compress the data right now? Usually, when we start to thinking about the compression, it's, okay, the compression with this 50% is more than enough. But as you can see, the real-time compression algorithm, which is ins included with the software uh, of the Storewise, can compress the data in 80%, but what is the, f the, the best in this solution? That there is no need to improve hardware over on, on, top of that, on top of this compression because it's so efficient, it's made on the very efficient algorithm, very fast algorithm, and you can easily deploy that kind of data from the storage GUI as a volume connected to the storage system, to, to your soft, uh, server system, for example, and you will not feel the difference between those technologies. This is the compression and database performance. As you can see, we got non-compressed volume, this is the first one. This is the compressed volumes, volume on the spindle drive. And this one is on the flash. As you can see, the response time in seconds in compressed volume is much, much lower even than uh, non-compressed one. So as you can see, the compression algorithm in software, on the storewide software is very fast and very efficient. What the, what, what's client thinking about the, this algorithm? First of all, the, everyone was thinking, okay, this is performance consuming. It will not work very well in my uh, IT infrastructure. It doesn't work with that kind of data, so on, so on. Yes, of course, sometimes it doesn't work because if something is already compressed, it's hard to compress it again, of course. But we have in software stack, in, the soft, in storewide software stack, we have the possibility to calculate the compression values for every single volume. Not only based on the IBM, of course, machines, but also for others. We can calculate, is the data compressible or not? And we can apply the software or not. You, can, you have two choices. Second part is possibility to make replication across the world, not only across the country. The IP replication gives you that possibility. And what is important here is not that we have the IP replication, no. Most important part is that, that we apply Bridge Sunslight software inside the Storewise software. And it was done very fast and very easy to just to create possibility to, re to replicate volumes in two sites using the IP connection, but three times faster than just regular making the, packing the uh, sun frames into IP frame and sending to, and delivering to the other side. This technology gives you possibility to increase the speed, but what is the most important part, that it's available just like additional software inside the software stack. Okay, next part is possibility to make policies across your data. I was talking about how the data is organized, what type of data do you have, and now you can have also with the Storewise software possibility to create policies and store the data across the storage system just using those single policies of course, it gives you possibility to uh, scan files across the whole infrastructure, for example, in the NAS storage devices, and send it to another other site across the, let's say, ocean. Even 8,000 kilometers uh, replication is possible with this, uh, with this software. Next part, as you can see, we have it right now. We have this storage mobile dashboard for our boxes. But think what you can have when you create your own application. 
You can create your own application, for example, for deploying the database, for deploying the virtual machines, for deploying, I don't know, whatever you want. Because you will have the API for that, and you will have the possibility to create your own path of managing the storage. And of course, having the possibility to share the data, share your administration data across the internet, across the company. But I was talking about the software. I was talking about the functionalities. Now let's try to find possibility to speed everything up. I was talking that deploying the software on the, hard, on, the, on the hardware is possible and it's easy. This is a very good example of that. The box is called IBM Flash System. Uh, one year ago, IBM bought a company from USA called Texas Memory Systems, which for 30 years works with the SSDs and with the flash technology. And of course, it developed their own boxes, their own flash, soft flash storages. Now, when we have this combination between TMS and the IBM, and of course, we have the possibility to apply the software, this is a very good example of that. Because we connected together two technologies, the SVC and the flash, and we created something which is totally amazing. Because we, we have very fast storage with very big functionalities on top of that. And you can deploy the storage in different ways. You can use it just like a fast tier, or you can use it as a part of your solution, as a part, for example, from easy tier, for use to, to, to store the data across the different tiers. Why it's so important and what's behind that? Let's see what do we have on the flash system. First of all, we got possibility to achieve extreme performance on this box. Million IOPS, it's nothing for us right now. But show me the company which needs million IOPS. Do we have any of those on the whole? Million IOPS? Yeah, that's why, that's why it's not very important. Because it's not a problem to create storage based on the spindle drives which can deliver you million IOPS. Is it possible or not? What do you think? Okay, let's play a little bit of math. I made PhD in physics, but math is also my favorite part of the science. So, one single drive. How many IOPS you can have from one single drive? Let's say 15,000 RPMs. 200, yes, it's a good answer. So I got the candy, it's just for you. Good answer. I got more, so be aware. What do you think? So 200 from one single drive. So now start using your brain or, or, uh, or, or, or smartphones. How many drives do we need when we have from one single drive 200 IOPS and we want to achieve million IOPS? No. <laughs> Never, the, the hardware uh, likes this sentence that there is never too much of hard drives. For me it is actually, yes, but. 500. 500, yes, we got the answer. So the candy is yours. They asked me to do not go from the stage because the cameraman hates that. So I will remember and this is the candy for you. So it's easy, but there is no point. Do you know how many uh, watts will have that kind of created storage. How many kilowatts? Too many. This is the, the best answer. You can have it from here for in 300 watts, just like small server. But it's not the point. The biggest point is, which I, I want to point, is that, that we want to have access to the data as fast as it possible. Everyone is using smartphones. And everyone is doing fast connections, yes? What's happened when you are op opening your Facebook page and you are waiting for a data? 
You hate that because you are waiting for a data and you want to have the data just like that immediately. And this is the answer. The, the flash storage is the answer. Why? Because you can have the access to the data not in microseconds. Not in, sorry, not in milliseconds. You can have it in microseconds. 100,000 faster than it's possible. So, why we want to use the flash? First of all, as you can see, the speed of the drives in the last 30 years changed only in 5%. Why? Because there is a physics. There is no possibility to create spindle drive which be which be, uh, which be running 25,000 RPMs because there is no material on Earth we can, we, which can handle that. That's why we want to change the technology. So, first of all, it's the technology, but also the software behind that. Again, software. Look, what do we have here? First of all, as you know, every single flash storage can be broken. Every single flash cell can be burned out. And to avoid that and to have the fast storage, we need the protection. We need protection on the level of your modules and also on the level of single cells. Again, software. Again, applying software from your storage. Next part is making the possibility to very fast Administration. This one is user interface. What is the funny story? When we acquired the TMS, we put software for the user interface from Storewise Pack. And now everyone is loving that because it's easy. As you can see, it's clear and it's easy to deploy volumes, easy to connect storage to your systems easy to manage, easy to service, everything is quite, quite easy. Next part is when we are applying software to very fast storage, we can have the possibility also to create very fast and very efficient platform for different applications, for different virtualization, for different, for example, different storage, different uh, systems like VMware. Having just the bare metal is not the point. Having the possibility to make the hardware acceleration for the, for the virtual machines, hardware acceleration for VMS creation, failover across the VMware infrastructure, it's also important. And co cooperation between software-defined storage and the fast storage, as you can see, it's, it's clearly visible and it gives you that possibility. But why the latency is so important? Why are we are talking only about the IOPS and no one is talking about latency? What do you think? Because no one is aware about that. No one knows what is the latency. And now let's play a little bit with the math. As, what do we, we have something like that. We got two different technologies. First one is spindle based. Second one is a flash base. You can see the difference between those two technologies, yes? It is the I.O. time. What is the I.O. time? I.O. time is the response from the storage to question send it from CPU to have some part of data. And usually, this is about an, on the level 100 microseconds. So we got the 100 microseconds. Maybe I will just draw it somewhere. Just give me a second. So let's divide. Let's divide this IO, this IO time. This one. We get. Approximately 100 microseconds just for sending, just send it from CPU to your storage. Question about one single I.O. 
So the operation started. Then we are waiting for what? For answer from your storage. And usually, when we are building, planning the storage, what is the time, response time from your storage? What do you think? What is the response time? Just the average box, spindle. Five milliseconds is good or bad? Okay, we got one guy who is talking, is good. Suddenly, five, mi five mi microseconds is just like that in this picture. So this is 100 microseconds. So five milliseconds is 5,000 microseconds. So this is 5,000, 5K. And of course, we have adi an additional 100 microseconds. Just data was delivered to the CPU and the system is working on it. So tell me, for one single I.O., in this situation, describe it over there, when we are working on the, not on the, on, on hardware, on storage level, on software, on, on system level, the CPU, how much time spend the CPU here on this one single I.O.? This is too much, yes. <laughs> Of course. This is just let's add everything. So it's 52 hundredths of milliseconds. But the CPU is working on 200 micro, which gives you that in, for one single I.O., CPU is working just for 4% of the time spent for this single I.O. And what we can change here? The network? No. The CPU time, ah, it's expensive. What we can change? We can change this one. This, the, the, the response time from the flash, for example, or SSD, whatever. So this is the I.O. time. We can change it. How we can change it? The response from the flash technology, from the SSD technology, will be at level 100 microseconds. So let's play 200. And we have, what do we have? We have 100 microseconds on CPU, 200 microseconds on flash, and 100 microseconds on CPU again for one single I.O. So the CPU whole time for one I.O. is right now 400 microseconds. And CPU is working on 50% of the time for the single I.O. And now we can have something like that. This is the response from the storage. This is response time from the spindle, 5,200, and time for processing the data. And what we can do with the extra time? Of course, we can do more processing on that. Because we are not waiting for a data. Yes, if you are using... Yes, of course, of course. I'm just a little bit exaggerating. Yes, of course, it will be much more, it will be go, yes, it will be goes to nanoseconds even. We can, we can put the DRAMs there, of course, different technologies. But I'm talking about the whole idea about software-defined storage and placing different storage outside your server to have possibility to share those, those machines across whole IT infrastructure. Of course, technology, when you put PCI card inside the server, you will speed up m m even faster. Yes, when you replace the SSD for the DRAMs, it will be mu much, much faster because you will go to the nanoseconds. I'm talking about devices which you can connect outside the system via Sun network, iSCSI network, whatever network, and share those boxes across whole IT infrastructure. This is just, you know, the, 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 the idea about that. And we started two years ago with that kind of idea, to create storage 
which is efficient by design, self-optimizing, and cloud agile. And now we are jumping to another era of creating the storage, creating the storage software, which means we can have possibility to have base, let's say store-wise, and create application APIs, create the data pass APIs for different storage, different software vendors, different software uh, applications, and have the possibility to connect, collect them and connect them in the one single storage system. And with this image, I want to go back to our idea of world being shaped with big data. Because as just in the, at the end, I want, to, I want to show you that it is possible to create patterns, to store the patterns across the systems, to create word with open stack, for example, as a base, with open systems, with no attaching to one single vendor, to attaching to one single technology, to have possibility to, to connect and spread this software across different type of servers, software, uh, servers, hardware, whatever. So thank you very much for the attention. If you have any questions, just grab me there on the corridor. I will explain you. We can play with the numbers, of course. I will just show you uh, what is the difference uh, in our portfolio. I don't want to play with your, with just with the IBM portfolio. I want to just show you the idea of the totally different approach for the storage. So thank you very much for your attention and have a nice day.